Like I said, it's good to be here this morning. We appreciate you this morning. We appreciate the goodness of God. We pray and ask you this morning, be much in prayer as God gives us this message this week. And and uh, I guess it was long about early Wednesday morning for uh, a couple of days. Uh, my mind was much in thought and much in prayer. And uh, long, I guess, about Wednesday morning, God began to touch my heart uh, with these verses of Scripture. And as I read down over them, I uh, don't ever remember, ever, uh, in my ministry, I announced my calling to preach in 95, and uh, I don't ever remember preaching from these verses of Scripture, but God began to show me some things down to it, and I wanted to look at them this morning uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to try my best to take my time this morning. Yes, I might run over a little bit, but don't get in a hurry to leave. Uh, uh, this afternoon, and uh, we'll try our best to touch on these as God allows us to this morning uh, by the help of God. Amen. In chapter 7 of the book of Luke, amen, start reading with me in verse 44, then I want to go back uh, as I go down through the message, back over to verse 36, uh, and start reading right there once again, if God will let me, as I go into this this morning, and if I'm able to bring it out the way God gave it to me this week, I believe it'll be a blessing to you, and it'll be a help to you uh, as a member of this church, and I praise his wonderful name for that, amen. All right, in verse 44, the Bible says, And he turned uh, to the woman and said unto Simon. Now you'll find out this man named Simon here. He is a, uh, a Pharisee, uh, and uh, uh, Jesus has been invited to his house. And we'll get into that just in a minute. But he turned to Simon. This is not Simon Peter that he's talking to. Uh, amen. Uh, and he said, And he turned to Simon, uh, and he said, Seest thou this woman? Uh, I entreated her, uh, I, I entered into thine house. Let me read that again. And he turned unto the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time that I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins were which are many. Notice what that said. Her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that said it me with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sin also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith, uh, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Amen. Let's go back to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray now, God, Lord, as you as we come to you, Lord God, that you send God that unction, Father, from the other side. God, give us that we need, Heavenly Father, today. God, I praise you, Lord, for each one that's here. God, today, I thank you and praise you for all you've done. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning by the help of God that uh, when I got into this and began to look at that, and uh, the title of the message this morning uh, is Love Much, Loveth Little. Love Much or Loveth Little. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 7, you'll find a piece of scripture over here. Let me go over and read it to you. Uh, amen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7, it says, Then, it says, Even them which I bring uh, to my holy mountain to make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon the altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Amen. Now, in Jesus' early ministry, you'll find over in the book of Matthew over there, and I, I never wrote it down, but it's when Jesus walked into the, in, into the house, of, uh, house of God over there, and uh, 
he planted him a, a whip of and stuff, and he began to throw out the money changers, and he began to uh, rebuke them for the, those things that had been invited into the house of God, and those things that they were doing. And he quoted from the book of Isaiah, he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Amen. And then I pinned right down below that, friend, when we invite Jesus into our house, how do we treat him? Should he be the, he should be the most honored guest for he is God, the great I am. Amen. Now, let's go back over to verse 36. Listen to what he said. Luke chapter seven, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desiring him that he would uh, eat with him or he would come. He says, and this is, and he says, and he went in to the Pharisee's house, this is Jesus, uh, and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus had set to meet uh, in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment. Now don't misunderstand, this is not the one that brought the alabaster box and break and anointed Jesus for uh, uh, his burial and resurrection. This is not the same one. This is the woman that had an alabaster box of ointment, and she used it to anoint the feet of Jesus, representing the humility uh, that was in her heart. Uh, amen. Verse 38, And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears, and did wipe them, uh, with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed uh, them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it or had asked him to come into his house, uh, said, uh, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, talking about Jesus, uh, would he have known uh, what a what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee, and he saith, Master, say on. Master, say on. Amen. And as I begin to look into these verses of Scripture, and I begin to think about uh, the house of God and the house of prayer, uh, and the poor with it, we have asked Jesus Christ to come into our house. Amen. You see, this house is standing here before you this morning. Amen. This is a house uh, that God gave me uh, several years ago when I was born into this world. God put me in a house of flesh. Amen. But there come a day and time down in my heart and my soul, friend, uh, that God showed me lost and undone. Uh, amen. And he began to knock at my heart's door. And as he began to knock at my heart's door, uh, there come a day and time when I realized, hi, uh, friend, that I was on my way to a place called hell. They was, uh, that I was on my way uh, to destruction. My life was headed for no good. Uh, amen. Uh, but through the mercy and the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, God began to knock on my heart's door. Uh, amen. And I invited him in. Amen. Can you say, well, preacher, have you treated him right ever since he's been in your heart? And I'd have to stand before you this morning and raise my hand to God. God knows my heart. There have been times, uh, friend, that I've, I've pushed him back in the corner somewhere or another and I've tried to do my own thing. Uh, amen. But just in a little while, God begins to rebuke me. Amen. Uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And God begins to touch my soul, friend. And He begins to show me what I, uh, where I am and who I am and, and what I represent this morning, friend. Uh, you and I this morning, we represent uh, the very Lamb of God. Amen. And there's not a day passes in my life that I don't go to him uh, and in prayer, friend, uh, asking him to forgive me uh, for I am a person that is a sinner saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. Down here in this world, uh, when this woman there's and, and knowing the, the condition of her life, amen, and she knew that Jesus had entered into the uh, house of the Pharisee over there. And when I began to read this, the thought crossed my mind. 
Now, I don't know what this woman's reputation was. I don't know whether that she uh, uh, lived her life, the life of a harlot, or whether she was just a, a person that was wicked or anything else like that. Uh, the Bible doesn't say, friend. Uh, but one thing that I do know, that uh, according to this, she was familiar uh, with the, the Pharisee's house. She was familiar with that place. In other words, when she knew, notice what it said, when she knew that Jesus was coming into that house. Amen. Now think about this. Uh, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart December the 12th, 1978. Uh, friend, and a lot of my family uh, began to rejoice because I was saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. And I had a lot of friends out there that I walked with and run with and done things with that I shouldn't know to do and everything, they looked at me and they said, give him just a couple of weeks, he'll be right back out here with us, amen. Uh, but see, there was something very special happened down in my heart and my life, friend. Uh, God changed me on the inside. He made me a new creature, my uh, friend. As Paul of old walked on the road to Damascus over there with letters uh, to persecute uh, the children of God over there, and, and he met Jesus there on the road in chapter nine of the book of Acts. You can read the story over there in the Bible said that he fell on his face on the ground before the, uh, the presence of an almighty God. This woman, when she walked into the presence of the Pharisee's house and she saw Jesus, her heart was broken. And she began to weep. And she began to, uh, to wash his feet and show forth the humility down in her heart and life. Amen that you and I should walk with every day of our life. Amen. Uh, Jesus should be the first and the foremost uh, down in our heart and soul, friend. Uh, we should love him more than anything else in this world. Now, my wife's is sitting out, uh, out there in the car, and I can't begin to tell you how many times in our married life, we'll be married 44 years pretty soon. I can't begin to tell you how many times that I've told her that I love her from the deep in the hole of my heart. I can't begin to tell you that. But then I think about how many times, friend, how many times do I look up and I say, God, I love you from the deep in the hole of my heart. Amen. And that joy water starts moving down my face. Amen. And as I began to speak to a friend of mine about uh, the scriptures that God had laid on my heart this week, I stood out there in the front of my house in the driveway. I can't hardly get a phone call out from any other place. And, uh, but I stood out there in the driveway and the, uh, and the joy water was uh, running down my face this morning, uh, that morning when I was uh, talking. Hey man, about this right here. And we began to share and we just had church over the phone. Him 400 and some miles away. We began to have church. Hey man, you know why? Hey man. His house is a house of prayer. He told me uh, this week, he said, brother, he said, I'm going to lift you up. Hey, man, I can feel his prayers working in my heart and my soul uh, right now. I can feel your prayers working uh, in my heart and my soul right now. Hey, man, my heart's heavy, but God knows uh, today. And I praise his wonderful name for what God's able to give. Hey, man. And everything, and I thought I find myself uh, uh, looking and searching in my mind, and I say, "How am I treating you, Lord? How am I, well, what am I doing for you? What I mean, what what have I give to you, Amen?" Alabaster was a very precious ointment in that day and time. The lady that broke the box and anointed the head of Jesus for his bur uh, burial over there. Uh, it was said by the disciples, why this could have been sold. Why did she waste this? Friend, it wasn't wasted. Hey Amen. When you anoint the very Lamb of God, and you say, how can I anoint the very Lamb of God? Uh, he's been gone to sit with Jesus for nearly 2,000 years, friend. You can anoint Him, friend, this morning by your faith, and by your trust, and by your belief, and by your service uh, to the Lamb of God. You can anoint Him that way. That's how you anoint the Lamb of God. Amen. You say, well, people don't wash each other's feet anymore. We don't all. When I've been this summer, I've wore sandals a lot, and I've even worn them here to the church, and I preached in my sandals here at the church this summer. And I found out one thing by wearing sandals all summer long, your feet gets dirty. 
Amen. When you go get in a shower and your feet's dirty from about your knees down and everything where you've been in the dust and the dirt and, and, and different things like that right there on your feet uh, is one of the things that, uh, that and everything. It was customary. It was customary in that day and time to wash the feet uh, of an honored guest, to offer them water to wash their feet, uh, to greet them with a holy kiss. Now you and I today, we don't greet each other with a kiss anymore. You know what we do anymore? We stick out our hands and say, it's good to see you, brother. It's good to look at you. Know, it's, good, it's good to talk. But we've been told now we can't shake hands. We've been told that uh, uh, there's an unseen virus out there that's trying its best to, to get rid of all of us and I'm going to let everybody do their own thinking about, about that. But this morning, I'm trusting God with all of my heart. I'm trusting God uh, and everything to help me uh, as, the, uh, as a man of God. To help me to look up every day and say, Lord, it's good to see you. Lord, it's good to have you in my presence. Lord, allow me to wash your feet. Lord, allow me to dry them off. Lord, allow me to anoint you with praise. Amen. We've preached now for about two or three weeks there straight behind this about how we're to praise the Lord. Amen. We preached last week what the psalmist David said over there. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. You know, that's very little to pay down here in this world. That's very little to pay for what Jesus done for you and I. It's very little to pay. You'll find out over the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 20. Let me flip over there to that. Listen to what it says. Start reading with me in verse 18. Listen to what he says. And he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. What a verse of scripture. As many as I love. Friend, God loves you and I this morning. And every once in a while, God takes us a little bit to the woodshed. Every once in a while, God sends a little chastisement into our life. But friend, we've not seen anything yet. We've not seen the wrath of God move uh, down here in this world, friend. But he says to be zealous, amen. In other words, in other words, to have a desire down in your heart and soul uh, to, uh, to, to be repented up. Several years ago, I rode with my brother back from Asheville and this road was slick and he was running about 65 or 70 mile an hour uh, drinking a drink, talking to his wife on the phone and, and everything. And I'm sitting over on the other side in the passenger seat and he'll probably hear this message and get a, and get a kick out of it, what I'm saying. And everything, when he let me out at my house, I looked at him and I said, Brother, there ain't nothing I've got to repent for. I'm all prayed up. Uh, amen. I'm all prayed up. Sometimes it takes something to jar our souls to get all prayed up. It takes something to move us uh, down in our heart and soul uh, to, to get you all prayed up. Amen. Notice what he said in verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. Amen. Now, I don't know the condition of that Pharisee's heart when Jesus left his house that day. It's not written down that he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. It's not given in the Word of God. But he brought a message 
to that Pharisee over there. And the message was a, was a hard message to hear. When he said up there, he said, Simon, he said, I have somewhat to say to you. Verse 40, say unto thee. And he said, say on, master. Say on. And he began to tell him, you invited me into your house, master. You invited me in. And he'd had to say, yes, I invited you in. And he'd say, but when I come in, you never treated me as an honored guest. That of my heart and soul. Good friend of mine came over yesterday from North Carolina and ate supper with us. And we took most of the day to prepare for her coming. Now that's just a good friend. We took most of the day we swept the floors, mopped the floors. We made sure everything was in the right place and everything looked good. And all that I, all that we did and everything was for her. Now, if I hadn't had anybody coming to meet, uh, to be at my house and you say, Preacher, I'm not like that. Well, I hope and pray that you keep your house spotless at all times. But mine's not. Yeah, man, there's times that there'll be trash getting the floor. I mowed my yard last week and I can't begin to tell you how much grass I swept up out of our floor and everything. You say, preacher, you're airing your you're you dirty laundry. No, I'm not airing dirty, dirty laundry. What I'm trying to do is to tell you, friend, uh, that you and I, uh, we live in a world and we're all sinners uh, before God. Amen. But we've got an honored guest, friend, uh, that wants to come into your house. If you're here lost and undone without a Savior, uh, amen, and he comes to you and he says, uh, and he begins to stand at the door and knock, friend. One of the first things you'll do if you don't know who's, if somebody's a coming, you'll walk over to the door and if you've got a little peephole, you'll look through the peephole. If you've got a little curtain, you'll pull the curtain back and you'll see, try to see who's out there. And if you're by yourself, a lot of you women will say, who is it? A lot of you men, we just go open the door. Just don't matter to us sometimes, but we'll open the door. But if it's somebody that we don't like or somebody that we don't, that we, that's a stranger a lot of times, we won't invite them in. We won't invite them in. And we hear him say, it is I. Who is it knocking at my door? And Jesus will speak up and he'll say, it is I. It's me. How do I know you're who you say you are? Jesus might reply from the other side of the door. He'll say, can I come in? He said, the word of God hath made me known. The word of God has told you who I am. The word of God has showed me. And the Holy Spirit has been drawing me for a long time. Or been drawing you to me for a long time. It is I. Can I come in? Can I come in? And you're liable to look around and say, well... My house is not ready for company. Friend, my house wasn't ready for company when Jesus began to knock on my heart's door. My heart was riddled with sin. My mouth was filthy. It was commonplace for me to use the Lord's name in vain, friend, when I was lost and undone without a Savior. But friend, praise His holy name when He began to knock on my door. I began to see the dirt in my life. I began to see uh, what kind of shape I was in. I began to see my faults and my failures, my addictions. I began to see all of that. When he began to knock on my door, and there come a day and time when I couldn't resist any longer. I come to the point in my life knowing that, I, that if I lived another day, that I'd probably never have another change. I felt like that I was at the end of my rope. Now I can't tell you the mind of God. God never continued to deal with me till I was an old, old man. 
But I felt like I was at the end of my rope. And I said, come in, Jesus. Come into my heart and my soul. And friend, he's been there shopping with me ever since. There's been times that I've not washed his feet. There's been times that I've not anointed him uh, with praise and honor and glory. Amen. Uh, there's been times in my life, friend, uh, that, that, that I've tried to keep him stuck off summers in a corner just in case I might need him a little bit later on, friend. Trouble times come. Trouble times is coming. When we look out into the world today, what do we see? We see nothing but division. We see a world that's wanting to do away with the church of the living God. We see nothing but division. But friend, I tell you this, look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Look up because the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. And I counsel you, church, Stay strong. Lift each other up. Forget about foolishness. Because there's coming a time when you're going to need all the strength that you have. And all the strength that we have as, 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 as children of God. Be faithful unto death. And God will give you a crown of life. Amen. In Luke chapter 7, verses 44 through, 30, uh, 4 through 46, I've just read them to you. The last little thought that I put down, friend, what have we give to Jesus? What have we give to Jesus? Jesus gave his life so that we could live. He gave his life. Didn't have to. He asked the father over there, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. I thank God this morning that I'm saved by God's marvelous grace. I thank God this morning that God sought to speak to my heart this week. And by the help of God, I give you what the Lord gave me down through this week. And I praise his wonderful name. I appreciate you. I appreciate the church of the living God. Amen.